Hey everyone, and welcome to the Arcto Studio V 1.1 tutorial. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use Arcto Studio. Let's start with the basics. The 3D viewer. You can interact with the robot using the middle mouse button to pan the view, the left mouse button to rotate it, and the scroll wheel to zoom in or out. The gizmo on the screen is another helpful feature. It allows you to translate the robot, moving it up, down, left, and right. If you need to rotate the robot instead, just hit the G key on your keyboard and you'll switch to rotation mode. You can also control the robot using the sliders. Each slider corresponds to one of the six joints, allowing for precise manual control. The movement is restricted by the robot's real joint limits, so you won't exceed its physical range or risk a crash. For more precise adjustments, you can either type in exact angle values or use the mouse wheel to fine-tune them. Scrolling directly over the sliders provides even finer control for more accurate positioning. The gripper has its own dedicated slider and buttons, making it easy to open, close, or set it to an intermediate position. You'll also see the option to set the feed rate for the robot's movements, which controls how fast or slow it moves. Next up, let's talk about direct control. This feature allows you to control the physical robot in real time. Now, let's get the robot connected. There are two connection options, open loop or closed loop. For this tutorial, I'll choose open loop, which is simpler. You just need to select the appropriate port and click connect. Once connected, you'll see the robot is ready to move. Once you've made the connection, enable direct control and you're ready to move the robot. You'll notice that G-code is generated based on the robot's current position ensuring precise control as the robot moves. We can now reset the robot to the zero position, which is a great starting point for your tasks. Now let's dive into programming the robot. Programming in Arcto Studio is easy. You can define a target, which represents a position for the robot to move to. Once you've set a few targets, the robot will move between them to perform your task. Let's create our first program by simulating how the robot picks up an object and places it elsewhere. We'll start by defining the approach position. Next, we open the gripper and record that as another target. Now, we move to the pick position, aligning the gripper with the object. Once in place, we save the target, then close the gripper and record that step. With the object secured, we need to lift it up to avoid collisions. I'll raise the arm and save this position. You'll notice a dot appears for each target, making it easy to track. Now, let's move to the drop location. Finally, we open the gripper to release the object and return the robot to its original position, saving the home position as well. Let's save the program, give it a name, and now we can run the simulation. You can see the robot moving step by step, just as we programmed, picking up an object from one location and placing it in another. Looks good. Now, let's load another program. This time, we'll tweak a few settings, adjusting transition, delay, and speed to refine the movement. And that's it. Congrats! You're now a robot programmer. Pretty simple, right? For more robotics content, follow us and stay tuned.